In this video, we are going to talk about linear differential equation of the first order. So the equation or a differential equation which is in linear or is linear and of uh, order 1, okay, in the dependent variable y must be by definition, so this is the definition, must be in the form a of x differential y plus b of x y differential x is equal to c of x differential x. Okay, so if it does not fit this form, then therefore the differential equation is not a linear differential equation. There are key uh, clues here, wherein we can say that this is a, a differential equation is linear. First of all, if you have uh, you have here y, right, and if th that is y squared, then therefore that is no longer a linear differential equation. Okay. So, also, if a uh, differential equation would contain y times uh, y prime, y, y prime, or y, then derivative of y with respect to x, then therefore, this is no longer a linear differential equation. Okay, because the uh, degree uh, would now become 2 in this case. Okay. Now, let us focus on uh, the differential equation that's uh, given, the definition, which is a of x dy plus b of x y differential x is equal to c of x, c of x dx. Okay? So, if I will divide the differential equation by a of x, then therefore, I will have d of y plus b of x over a of x dy times dx is equal to c of x over a of x dx. Now, the uh, quotient of b of x over a of x, let us uh, name that quotient as p of x. And let us... Uh, Name the quotient of c of x over a of x to be q of x. Okay, so this particular form is uh, what we will choose to be the standard form for a linear equation of order 1. Okay, so this is now the, this is what we will uh, use as our standard form. Okay. Standard form of uh, a linear equation or a linear DE, linear differential equation of order 1. So every time you will see a dif uh, differential equation, you will check if it fit if it fits this form. Okay, if it fits this form, then therefore you will conclude right away that this is a linear differential equation of order 1. Okay? Now, upon proving or upon uh, transforming your differential equation into the standard form, so again, our standard form is uh, differential y plus p of x times y differential x is equal to u of x dx. No? Upon proving that, uh, or upon uh, transforming your differential equation to this form, notice that if I will multiply uh, an integrating factor, okay, or a factor, which is v is equal to e raised to the integral of p of x dx, uh, if I will multiply that to my differential equation, then this will now become e raised to integral of p of x uh, dx dy plus e raised to the integral of p of x dx times p of x y dx is equal to e raised to the integral of p of x dx times q of x dx. Okay? Now, notice first that on the right side of our equation, this is uh, this will result into a uh, 
into a function which is uh, exclusively in x and therefore it can be integrated right away because you have a function in x and then uh, by differential x so it can be integrated now what can we say about our left side of the equation our left side of the equation is actually the differential of y times uh, e raised to the integral of p of x dx. Okay? So, I don't know if uh, you can already see it. But, if you get the differential of y times e raised to p of x dx, you know, by formula of uh, derivative of a product, then you will uh, arrive at this form. Okay, so let's uh, test if if I will get the differential, will it be equal to this form? Okay, so remember that your uh, u times v, the differential of u times v is equal to u v prime plus v u prime. Okay, so you have y. What is the now what is the differential of uh, e raised to p of x dx? No? So that is uh, an exponential function. So therefore that would be e raised to the integral of p of x dx. Then e raised to u differential u. Then therefore uh, differential of uh, p of x dx. The u here is the integral of p of x dx. Okay. So therefore we will get the differential of the integral of p of x dx. We will uh, simplify that later on. Okay, so you have uh, y e raised to u du. Okay, and then we add e raised to the integral of p of x dx times dy. Okay, so the second term, the second term here, second term here is already this one okay so let us simplify the first term that uh, we have uh, we have gotten from getting the differential no so the the question here is what is this differential of the integral of uh, p of x dx so by definition of uh, antiderivative no? If I will get the integral of p of x dx, then it will be the differential of uh, the one that you are integrating. So therefore, the simplification of the term, the differential of the integral of p of x uh, dx would also be p of x dx. Okay? So... You might uh, be confused by this, no? but just think of it as, as uh, let's say, my p of x is equal to sine x, right? Let's say, no? my p of x is equal to sine x dx, and if I will integrate that, then that would be equal to negative cosine x, right? If I will get, now, if I will get the differential of my negative cosine x, then it will be equal to sine x dx. So, therefore, the integral of p of x dx, if you get the differential of the integral of p of x dx, then you will arrive again at p of x dx. So, if I will now simplify this, if I will now simplify, then therefore I will arrive at y e raised to the integral of p of x dx. Then this one is also p of x dx by uh, what we have shown here plus e raised to the integral of p of x dx times dy. So I have shown you that the left side of our equation is actually just the differential of y times the integrating factor, which is e raised to p of x dx. Okay? So this solution, this solution is applicable if it will fall under this standard form. If the differential equation will fall under this standard form, then therefore, you can use this integrating factor, which is equal to e raised to p of x dx.